Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode seven of Bearded Time. I am one of your hosts, Brad, the budding watch enthusiast. I'm here with Ricardo, Mr. Ready, Set, Watch. How are you doing, bud? I feel like it's been forever since we've talked. It feels like it's been forever. Um, Work has been very hectic for me that that's that's why we've been off for a couple weeks i've been working you've been you've been dadding yes. all over the place yes that is a very interesting job to have it uh it's a lot of getting used to well it's a lot to get used to um my wife actually went back to work um we were lucky enough where she works somewhere that she actually can bring him to work but that now requires me to drop him off in the morning and pick them up which is no easy task right um but um yeah it's been a little hectic recently but it's been it's been uh, i'll 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 give if you guys watch my channel i'll give you a peek behind the curtain if i ever do a q a video on a certain week it's because i literally didn't have time to sit down and plan out a video and film it (laughs) so like like during the course of the week so like when the q a's happen that's called shit (laughs) like Mm -hmm. i've got nothing better to do um So that's a. Uh, and guys, I'm just going to warn you if you hear crying in the background, um, this has probably me, been. I confess, I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> this has probably been the 10th time we've started this, this podcast over again. And we've reached a point where, you know what? Such is life. Such is life. I have a child. He will occasionally cry, but he will be in the background. My lovely, beautiful wife, amazing wife, is taking care of him while I get through this podcast. But See, such is life. See, that one, one day you're going to get pro level. You're going to have the soundproofing in the office around you. That's going to be, that's going to be the day. Uh, but uh, let us start. We'll let us start. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't start with our wristwatch checks. Uh, mine is going to be very, very familiar to you. I'm wearing your ECA uh, Calypso Arctic Sport that I've had oh. now for a couple of weeks mm-hmm. at this point. Enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah, I am enjoying it. Um. You know what? You know it sucks. You know it sucks a lot. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say, I but think I might like this one more than the black one. Honestly. <laughs> now that I've got it in hand, I think I like. I think I like this variant better. Not that the black one is bad, and not that I don't enjoy it as well. But I think if I'm deciding between the two, like if I had my druthers, uh, you know what sucks even more? What's that? I'm this close to telling you, hey, if you want to sell the black one and keep mine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Really? Like watch you just, like like you haven't you haven't missed it? I guess, eh? Watch love is such a fickle thing. Sure. Um, it's it's it's. Don't get me wrong, I miss it. Um, but you know, that little thing just comes back over and over again, and that's the whole strap thing. Mm-hmm. It, it 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 like it's like a little gnat that just keeps on. Mm-hmm. Well, well, here, well, before you make any rash decisions. I'm going to try to make a strap for it. Like, like I'm going to try to to fashion one and see if I can do it. Mm-hmm. And so if I can do it, maybe that'll change your tune on this one. If, 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 if you can manage that. Look, I, I have, I have some cheap, I'm sure I have a cheap ass leather strap. That's at least close from front with the lug width that I can, <clears throat> that I can try to cut up, cut apart and see if I can, uh, if I can make that happen, it should be easy. Like, like in yeah. theory, it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah, I, I think with, with it might actually even be easier if you try like with rubber first. That's interesting. That's a good point, actually. Because if you if oh, man, a rubber strap would look really good on this too. Because I think cutting the rubber would be much easier, yeah. and your your sides won't fray as much as like right. leather. Oh man, you give me a fantastic <laughs> idea. <laughs> This is going to happen at some point. But like yeah, a nice, like, a nice rubber strap, I think, would look excellent. On I don't know why they didn't offer it with this, because they have, they have rubber straps for some of their other watches that they have on the site. Dude, I've messaged them a couple times to see if they're going to offer more. Probably you know, not. More for that model, but it doesn't seem like that. It seems like they're kind of moving in a different direction. Right. Um, which, you know, side note, that happens a lot with micro brands. you ever see that where – like they have initial offerings mm-hmm. and then they just go left. Like they yeah. say, like they say, this is our initial catalog. 
And then once they've kind of established that, you never see those again. They kind of. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I think ECA is is a different beast. Like they they I think they're weird because they go into it knowing that they're going to like do limited production and that they don't plan on making more. Like you know, sure. Notice for example, they they dipped back into their old catalog and and reissued and redesigned some of their watches before. So and and and, and Vale puts out stuff. You oh know, yeah, they release yeah. models left and right. So. Um, but yes, that's what I've got on my wrist right now. Um, I, it's, it's killing me that I, that I really like the gray. It's, it, and, and again, it's because it's gray. Like if it was white, I wouldn't like it as much. And I thought it was, but then once I got it in hand. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to preface this by saying, I'm not trying to sell you the watch more. But, uh, <laughs> the, 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 and I'm actually remembering some of the things I really like about it. Like I, I wanted to ask them, but I'm pretty sure just when I look at it, it seems like the date will is metal. Um, it's hard to tell. It looks like it has kind of the same, at least finish that the dial does. It does. At least which, so. Which is, which is, it's kind of cool. It, the, you're seeing why I eventually went in that direction. Cause I did see the black one too, but mm-hmm. there was something about the, the, the gray one that just kind of worked for me. And I just said, you know what? That's the one I wanted. But I, it's funny <laughs> when I sent it to you and you kept on talking about the black, I was like, I will not be surprised if he gets that that gray one on his wrist. And he's just like, <laughs> I've been wearing the, I've been wearing this one a lot more, to be quite frank. So, and I I know that because I haven't heard Pete from you in regards to, hey man, when you want your watch back? <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, you also said I could have as long as I needed, and I, I did haven't had that. time to film the review. Yet, so that, I did, that's that's, I did. that's really the other reason that it hasn't really come back your way because I just haven't had time to actually sit down. And, which, and do that so which is this there are a lot of people who are waiting for that review like uh, yeah. i read some of the comments on the initial video you did it was interesting there was one comment which is which was like why are you doing a review about our watch Wait, which, no which i li- which i literally explained in the video yeah. like, like that like like i'm like clearly you didn't watch till the end because i literally said in the video i i understand i'm doing a review on a watch that you can't buy I'm doing it because I'm exposing you to the brand like that, like because they have another watch that's coming out soon and they have a watch that's currently available right now. And what's crazy is a lot of people started to say it's him. They were like, Hey dude, like this is like the only review video right. on the watch <laughs> anywhere. So, Hey, stop busting his chops, man. So I know that a lot of people are waiting for that review. So please get that, get that going. Get that it's, going. I, I think uh, so I'm, I'm filming, I'm doing my state of the collection this week and then i think that that's the next on deck is the uh is the, i might film them both tomorrow actually we'll see mm-hmm. we'll see what happens uh let me guess for you um citizen world timer no 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 actually but, um a watch i've had on loan for about oh years. that's right you have you have those uh you have those in. Yeah. yeah yeah i have the we're gonna we're gonna talk about those watches later in the podcast because uh Dude, when you show a- when you show when you show the picture of those watches i was like those look cool and then i looked into them and i'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you and i think so many people and i think we do have to have that conversation and i think that's probably gonna follow up uh, on the the other conversation we're gonna have later on in the podcast because i, I it's weird i always want to preface it by saying our goal and when I say ours, uh, watch with us, our goal is to expose you to brands that you might not always see out there. Um, there's, there are prototypical brands that you see everywhere, but we just want to introduce you to something you haven't seen. Um, so we understand that not everybody is going to like what we show. We also understand that people are going to have a lot to say about what we show, but that's okay. Um, but later on, I, it's not so much I'm going to defend the brand, but I'm, I'm going to put forward some, a different type of thinking to have, for yeah. people to at least understand what's going on there and not to just outright be like, compare apples to apples and be like, hey, what the hell? No way. At that price point. Ah! I, am, uh, I am interested to see what you're going to say. So, so, so just give me, give me a chance. Like I say, it's not going to be a full defense, but I, I, I understand the process is a little bit more now, but um, I will say aesthetically, mm-hmm. like not thinking about what's inside anything, the pure aesthetic of, of the watch, this has probably been one of the best looking 
field watches I've ever. Oh sure, ever it's had. it's it it is definitely a dope looking field watch in terms of just pure look. So, but we'll continue there. Um, yeah. But um, I think the the thing we kind of wanted to start with um, today, and I'll kind of bring it forward because it, it started a little while back um, on in actually the um, Michael Brand watches. Uh, Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, I put a post there, uh, basically, basically saying, okay, guys, you know, I know in here we have consumers, and we have micro brand owners. And I want to know what really drives um, the design for the owners in terms of when you make a watch, how much of that is, this is the design I want to put forward. And this is what I think people will like. And how much of that is also I also want to create something that I know will sell because mm -hmm. I can't create something so far out there that nobody's going to be interested in it. And so, so how do you kind of balance those two things? Because at the end of the day, no matter how much you love, you know, watches, mm -hmm. it's still a business that you're running. So you need sure. to move product. So there's got to be a balance there. And there were some great responses, had a lot of micro brands, a lot of brands, just 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 comment in terms of this is where i this is what i do when i think about this and, you know this is what i'm thinking i had like we had chris we had um nick uh, just a bunch of people the, that just commented on it and it was it was a just a great discussion and i think it's actually still going on in the group because every micro brand owner kind of has their own their own spin thing, on it, right? their own spin on it um so I wanted to just like, just talk with you. Like when that was more on the brand side, uh, as a consumer, as us being guys who buy watches, it, when you're buying the watch and you, you look at it, like how much of the design in terms of it being unique on one end and it being more wearable, on the other end, like where, where do you fall in that spectrum? Because I'll be completely honest, me, I fall more towards the wearability. Wearability, and I can, and you can tell that just by taking a quick glance at your, at your collection. Yeah. So, sure. so I like, cause for me, it's more of, I have base, I have fairly, when it comes to aesthetics and what I like, mm -hmm. I have fairly basic aesthetics. You know, my color wheel is not, 20 deep my color wheel maybe i'll get to five or six main colors in terms of what i wear so like there's a certain look i always look for with my with my watches so i like i tend to look toward more towards wearability that's what counts that, that's what matters more to me um and and the main reason behind that is when i first started i just would get all these unique cool looking things mm -hmm. uh, pieces what would annoy me was at the beginning of my day when it comes down to me deciding what watch to wear i found myself thinking more when i had all those different you know unique pieces and less when when i kind of just went more along my color wheel because you start off here then you you don't want to be sitting there thinking oh yeah i want to put this on Ah, but that really doesn't go with what I have on. I know it sounds like very <laughs> weird to, to 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 hear that, but no, I take that back. It's not weird. We like watches. Right. They're pieces of jewelry. When you wake up in the morning, you're gonna think about okay, what goes with my, what am I wearing? What watch? Oh, so every 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 morning I, I pick my outfit and then I'm like, all right, which watch will go alongside of it? And so that so I'm in I'm in a different spot than you. So like for me. I, I already have like a stable of quote unquote wearable watches, like watches that'll go with pretty much anything, mm -hmm. you know, between the sky quest and the C 65 and the, ha and, you know, my Hamilton and, and, and the, the Chris, the other Chris Ward C 65 that I'm probably selling and things of that nature. And the, NT and the knack and renegade, I think really does fall into that group as well mm -hmm. to a lot of extent. So, I already have a stable of wearable watches. So I find myself looking for the more unique designs because I have this group of watches that I'll wear all the time. So I don't mind going to get a watch 
that's maybe a little bit more bold color, maybe has a little bit more quirky of a design that I maybe won't wear as often, but it'll be really fun when I do. Now, the flip side of that conversation, if you look at the watches that I've sold since getting into this, since starting collecting, most of the watches I sold have been of that more, <laughs> more, <laughs> like more unique style because they don't get worn as often. So like, it's, it's, it's this weird, you know, like I'm drawn to these watches because they are unique, mm-hmm. but then when they don't get worn that often, I'm like, well, do I need to own this? Cause I'm barely wearing the thing. So like it's, <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's kind of what my thought process was when I, when I put that post, because if you think about it, the one, those tend to be the ones that you, you kind of dish off first Mm -hmm. because you're just not wearing them as often. But you also think about, yeah, you're not wearing them often. Mm -hmm. And, and in terms of a brand owner, how often as a consumer are you going to come back to that brand to get another one of their offerings? Because most of the time I'll give you a perfect example. And and I'm, this isn't saying anything negative about the brand. I actually think they make amazing watches. It's just for me, their aesthetic, sometimes it's hard to fall into because of just how I am. I, I like wearability. Ferrer. Mm-hmm. Ferrer has an aesthetic. And that aesthetic, there are a lot of people, there are people who like it. But but for people who like wearability, mm-hmm. there's a, there's, there's, it, it, it often doesn't speak to them because they have bold colors, um, a bold type of design. Uh, it's not even to say like they're out there, but their, their colors are more bold. Their colors, they work more on colors. So Ferrer might not be a, a, a now the thing about Ferrer might not be a good example because they, they still are able to move. You, you, know, uh, you, you know, the best example of this that I can just think of off the top of my head is, is Stratton. Stratton is probably one of the fit most most easy to pull examples of, of mm-hmm. a brand like this, where they have a very, very specific aesthetic that they that all of their watches kind of follow. Mm-hmm. And if you're into that aesthetic, then there's lots of choice for you. If you yep. are not into that aesthetic, there's nothing that they're going to sell that you're going to want. Yep. And 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 I had a Synchro, like I owned a Synchro for about a year. Mm-hmm. Enjoyed the hell out of that watch. I do like that aesthetic. But why did, but is it still in my collection right now? It is not because I never wore the thing. <laughs> and then, so. and then what, what, what's even worse about that is now down the line, mm-hmm. like how often are you going to tell yourself, okay, I'm going to pick up, pick up Stratton. Well, but Unless, see, that's, that's the thing. They, they see he's like Kyle's stuff still turns my head constantly. Like I'm still always like looking at his, looking at his watches. But, but I've never. But I haven't but bought you one. Don't touch right. I haven't yeah. bought one since. And that's what it is. So. And 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 part of it is one. I never want to stand in the way of somebody who's designing what they love. Mm. I don't want to go to Kyle and be like, "Oh, stop designing those, man." You know, if you design other stuff, it'll it'll sell. No, because I think a lot of the passion that he has goes with the designs that he creates. And there are people who buy his stuff. Well, and, that, and, that's, and that's the thing that I think that ultimately matters at the end of the day. As long as you do have a market for it, then you're fine. Like, and, 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 for, and for Kyle especially, up until I think his most recent like two releases, he ran all of his watches through Kickstarter. And there's a lot of drawbacks to Kickstarter. The biggest benefit to Kickstarter, especially if you're a microbrand owner, is the fact that you have a very, very good snapshot of what your, of what your customer pool is, what your, what your market potential is basically mm-hmm. for a particular watch. And I'm sure that helped. I'm, I'm sure the lessons he learned from that have helped him when it comes to, you know, how many watches should I make when I'm designing a new watch and, and what should I do for each colorway? And, and, it's, and those, those lessons learned for him mm-hmm. have, have helped kind of, I'm sure, let him make smarter business decision i'm obviously not going to speak for him because i don't mm-hmm. know for sure but that that is one of the big benefits that kickstarter has but i i do agree that it's it, you're, you could potentially be setting yourself up for you know some trouble if you just kind of make stuff that's more niche mm-hmm. um without having some offerings that are a little bit more 
like it's mass market for the la- for lack of better term, yeah. and we're still talking about micro brands yeah. right now. And and the and the other thing is, if you are going to make something niche, best believe you're going to have to go out and mm-hmm. find your buyer. Right. Like Cal, and I don't say out there like he's crazy. Cal is out there right which i appreciate which is great and it's something a lot of just by default a lot of micro brands have to do to draw attention to their brand so that people see what they're making but uh, there are times some there are some times where i see people put out a watch and they don't really do anything behind it and it's already a niche design Mm -hmm. like i see a lot of people who 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 and i i I said this and some people disagree with me but I, i still think it, it, it exists sometimes i think people come into watches thinking in terms of people creating a brand thinking that i'm gonna make something so unique right it's it's that it's there's the field, gonna be a buyer for it it's the field of dreams approach all i have to do is build it and and the people will come and that's yeah. not how that's not how that works that's not how it works like sometimes it's just this feeling i get where i look at some of these watches that that the like initial watches that people are putting out there and it's it's sometimes it's you know what this is my the this is what I thought it would be a great design cool, but sometimes I just feel like they're saying you know what there's there's so much of this out there mm-hmm. that I'm gonna come out with this crazy abstract out of this world in your face design, knowing that it'll draw more attention and I'll get more customers. It'll draw more more attention. It mm-hmm. definitely will. But attention doesn't always equate to customers when it comes to micro brand. Like people can point and say, oh, wow, you saw that? That thing was crazy. That doesn't always mean that people are going to eventually come over and say, okay, yeah, I'm going to buy that watch. It's, it's, and, a, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky business. Like I said, especially, especially for newer brands, I'm sure it's yeah. very difficult because you do want to differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Yeah. Like I, I don't envy any of those guys because if for me, it's like you're, you're working with sticks of dynamite. Mm-hmm. Where, where, you know what, you create this new watch, uh, like Chris, like Chris has his, his designs, which he does the research, he knows what sells, but I know there's still times where like, let's say there's a design he sees and he might want to put it out there. It's still like you're dealing with a piece of, piece of dynamite right. because, because you never know what's going to happen in the end. Like, like you don't know how people are going to react to that design. And that's so scary about owning a micro brand or just a, a well, mostly a micro brand. I think bigger brands, they pump out so much stuff. There's an economy of scale more. Than yeah. That. They're like, Oh, it sticks. Okay, cool. It doesn't stick. Ah, I don't care. We'll just pump something else out. Right. But, uh, but in terms of micro brands, that is scary. Mm-hmm. Like to you, you, you're putting something out there and you're hoping people respond to it enough where you could keep moving the brand um brand forward um but yeah it, it was it was just a very interesting conversation because there were some micro brand owners who are just like i know my aesthetic if people like it cool people don't like it oh wells that's my aesthetic right and then there are other micro brands who's just like you have to take into account what the overall wearability like I'm not saying go out there and you're making a ton of Rolex homages, but there is a formula. There, there is a, a base formula that people respond to mm-hmm. that you could kind of tailor and make a little unique enough to where you can create a brand and, 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 and more in terms of a lasting brand. Because like you said earlier, you might buy that initial unique offering, but that, that's, that's who's to say that that's going to be a repeat customer or you're going to get a piece yeah. customer it's 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 really hard it's i i like i said i don't envy any micro brand owner for but that, that being said though there's all sorts of different methods that, that people have to collecting like i i weird i'm i'm a weird person in that i rarely buy multiple watches from one brand especially if that brand does have a distinct language mm-hmm. um that they have in their watches because i like variety in my collection. And then there are some people that will buy every watch that a brand puts out Perfect. or every colorway of a specific model that a brand puts out. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Perfect case in point. I was listening to, um, I was listening to some old episodes of Warner and Wounds podcast. Um, and they had on the, 
the brand owner of um, Raven Watches. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about where he was somewhere and someone came to him and literally was like, yeah, I, yeah here's my collection. I have like 16 of the watches that you designed. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I'm just like, <laughs> like they, people like that exist. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I could never, people do. I could never see myself doing that because it, it, it but it's just they're different. Like you're like you're saying, they're just different types of. When when I when I discovered the Notice Avalon, it was at Vale's meetup last year, and and one guy that was there had three different color variants of that watch. So I got to see like all of the different, like pretty much all of the different variants in person. But he had bought all three of them. I don't think he was planning on keeping all three. I think he wanted all three because he couldn't decide which one he actually <laughs> wanted to keep. Wanted to experience them, and he was going to sell the other two. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like like that's uh, there are definitely people that collect that way. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's uh, but yeah, like I said, I I think that as long as you're smart, as long as like you said, you get yourself out there and and find your buyers, mm-hmm. then you can be niche. And, and make stuff that is a little bit more quirky and might not have as much appeal as long as, as long as you can find, again, as long as you sell every watch you produce, then you're doing all right. Especially yeah. the brand. It's when you, yeah. it's when you're sitting on inventory, that, um, that's, just, that, that's a problem. So that just sucks. But um, yeah. Yeah. Um, this, this transitions nicely into like, cause you, you talked a lot about wearability. Mm-hmm. Um, so last week I put out an episode on, on my YouTube channel where I talked about, how of the watches that I currently owned, um, do I have a watch that could for me be a one watch collection? And I, and I determined that I have one watch that, that could be that watch. And that is the Christopher Ward C65 GMT. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not going to detail why, because you can go to the budding watch enthusiast on YouTube and find that video and watch that. I mm-hmm. thought it was a pretty good one. And judging by the amount of uh, feedback I got, people agreed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I pose the question to you, my friend, uh, do you own a watch in your collection that could be a one watch collection, a watch that would suit you in any situation that you could possibly need it in, in, in your actual use case, not, not hypothetical use cases. No, really? No. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell I'm you, not, I'm not surprised that you don't, by the way, cause I, cause I know most of what's in your collection yeah. so <laughs> and it, it's funny you asked me this because i've spent the last week looking for that type of watch mm-hmm. and after days of searching i realized that watch doesn't exist oh i'm sure yeah i bet you i bet you that there is a watch out there that could scratch that itch for you even if you haven't found it yet i bet you that one does exist 100 meters water resistant, hand wound, silver or linen dial, 39 or 40 millimeters, 20 millimeters lugs. I'm very specific. Does it have to be hand wound specifically? Yes. Interesting. Yes. yes. Um, even, even, even a thin automatic would not, would not qualify. No. Because you don't even own a hand cracker right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, you've been you've been hunting for one. I can. For I, I see. Wow. But and, <laughs> and, and I'm gonna. I'm. I the reason it's so specific is because I realized if I don't make what I want specific, mm-hmm. I'm liable to buy something that I end up not keeping. Fair enough. So I I have to be specific. Man, if and only, if, if, if if only if only you wanted the blue dial C65. <sighs> trident diver you'd be set <laughs> it's and and th- th- here's the crazy thing so all those all those things are, are just i know somebody will probably listen to this and be like damn dude you're being very specific you're like come on that's the, unrealistic you're crazy but all those things in themselves encompass something that i'd feel comfortable wearing in any situation mm-hmm. so the hundred meters water resistance at minimum. Okay, cool. You know what? I could if I have the watch on and I and it's on its bracelet and I happen to dive, um, be swimming or something or taking a shower and I forgot to take it off. I'm not going like oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the one hundred meters water resistance. The, the size, 
the size is flexible. So, so it's, it's anything from like a 38 to a 41. So that's flexible. So that opens up the door a little bit more. Dial color is very important mm -hmm. because dial color will, will line up with the whole idea of wearability. So silver, white, something that I could literally put a ton of straps on. Because mm -hmm. if I'm going to wear only one watch, best believe I'm going to have a hundred different straps for it. <laughs> That's to say, you'll, you'll have a strap collection to go with your, to go with exactly. your watch. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, of course, if that's the case, 20, 20 millimeters, 22, I need standard lugs. No 19s, no 21s. I don't want to be looking forever for, for, for a strap. Um, so it's that. So those, and that's not even a lot. That's literally size dial color and the fact that i want it to be hand wound I, hand I i feel like, i feel like you're stretching with the with the hand wound i know the hand so, wound is there's not enough there's not enough watches out there that are manual only the hand the hand boy are, are you so right about that um <laughs> the, the hand wound is definitely that the thing like if you're looking at an inverted triangle mm -hmm. the hand wound is literally it takes everything here and bring it through. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 I know that's a tough, but part of me that's, that, it, and this is the slight annoyance about this. As we sit right now, there are four hand wound movements mm -hmm. um, that can be used. There's source, source movements to be. To source movement that can be used. Yeah. There's an SW215 hand wound movement comes with a date. SW210 hand wound movement time only yeah 28 2801 2 that's an edder movement hand wound also and the perso 7001 reason i like those all those movements is because unless i'm no i'm pretty sure I, the, they all hack mm -hmm. so that once again now i'm killing myself because i want hacking which now takes me out from your unitas your 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 um, 6497s, your, those big pocket watch movements mm -hmm. that some brands still can fit within a 41 case, but because it doesn't hack, I'm not a happy customer. Um, so that, that, those are four movements. And you can, well, you probably could believe how few companies use oh, sure. those movements. Oh, sure. Because, because it's, not, it, it's not a demand that yeah. most customers would have. Yeah. You basically have Christopher Ward. Mm hmm and a couple of niche brands, and Stoa. So Christopher Ward, Stoa, um, Archimedes, they, they, uh, they use it too. I'm trying to think who else. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a micro brand called Vertex. Mm -hmm. um, very, very expensive. Which you can, and which is not even really attainable by normal people, honestly. Yeah. So, so, so there, there's, there's a few. But the thing that kills me about it is the... the 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 movements are out there mm -hmm. and they, they can be sourced but no one there's there's no demand for it That's there's the no problem. demand for it right so, they're so not do it. especially especially when then i say i want 100 meters water resistance everything in my pie fucks up everything else <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's so on one hand i like i could just imagine me sitting in front of like a brand owner and i'm trying to order something a la carte and I'm just like, okay, um, I'll take the one with the 100 meters water resistance. Oh, no, no, but I want it to be hand wound. Oh, oh, no, no, but but you also have to make sure it hacks. Like, he would look at me like I'm crazy. Like, dude, forget it. Like, you, here's, it doesn't here's, here's, what I, here's what I've decided. If we, if we can achieve nothing else on this podcast, we will get a decently prominent micro brand to release one watch that has a hand wound movement inside oh, of it. Oh, man. Like, come on. Just, <laughs> Just anything, and you know what? I'll even take something from Myota. I think Myota makes the, but I don't know if the eight and thirty three hacks. That's what I'm not. I sure. don't want it. I don't want an eight series Myota movement in my in my one watch. Mm. <laughs> yeah, now now I'm now I'm getting hoity. That's right, pick, pick, pick me out. <laughs> movement snobs coming out of me. <laughs> so, yeah. that uh that got way nerdier than I thought it would. Yeah. Not, I, I wasn't surprised that you didn't have a pick. I did not think that it was going to hinge on, on yeah. getting a movement that you know you'll never get. So. I'll never get. <laughs> and, and, and you know what's, what's cool? Because I've been so tough on what I want, 
it's allowed me not to go crazy on buying a bunch of watches. Mm-hmm. Like like this first what what did we wonder what today is the twenty second? This first three weeks, I swear everybody and their mama has bought a new watch. And I'm sitting and I'm just like, oh and I'm just like, but no. <laughs> I'm just like I, I see what this I'm 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 getting I'm getting antsy just looking at all the fucking or geez. I'm getting antsy <laughs> looking at all the uh at looking at all the sectors that are dropping all dude, over the place. Dude, the sector fills that are dropping. Um I, I, I there are a couple um uh new micro brands I'm seeing people are talking about a lot of more diverse stuff, but that's not really really what I'm looking for. Um to tell you the truth, it seems like if I'd have to quantify what I'm looking for, it's like I'm I'm like it's like I'm looking for like a rugged dress mm. watch, if such a thing even exists. Um, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's this, <laughs> it's this, but with with a non difficult bracelet. That's what. That oh is. my god, dude! <laughs> if that bracelet, is, oh man, oh, all I need them to do is just make make some new straps. But let we'll see how your how, how your project um, goes. Yeah, how your thing goes. Um, but, you know, we're sitting here and we're, we're talking about the One Watch collection. Um, and it, it, it brings up something else that, uh, that we had started to talk about when we were thinking about topics for today's episode. And it, it's something that's right now very much annoying me. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think I kind of understand what's going on. Um, and it has to be watch pricing. Um, there's i don't i don't it seems like if this is how much a watch is going for retail mm-hmm. take 25% off of that mm-hmm. and this is what a lot of ads are selling it for are now are we are we are we not talking micro brands are we talking we're talking, we're talking larger brands. Because I think for, for micro brands, it's a little bit different. Uh, and when I say micro brands, I'm more talking about micro brands sub probably like 1K. Okay. Uh, but it, I'm talking about major brands and their pricing. Um, you and I, I think, have enough. We're not savants, but I think we have enough experience buying and selling watches mm-hmm. to know. And this is... There's not one watch I've ever seen, mm-hmm. uh, bar a few that are very hot, that sells for MSRP. Well, no. I mean, the gray market kind of makes that nearly impossible. Possible. For, the, for that to happen. And, and wh- the, the thing that kind of got uh, my, my head kind of started twisting is, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, what the hell is going on? Like, is it brands don't know what they're doing about pricing. Mm -hmm. Um, They can't find that perfect mark in terms of the cost of a watch. And then I I, I stopped for a moment and I actually thought about the equation and, and I'm going to give you a breakdown of my thought process. And then we could talk about the breakdown and you tell me what you think. So, so I I was sitting here and I'm just like, okay, across the board, it seems like most places, if a watch costs a hundred dollars, most places, and, and this is in terms of most ADs might give you anywhere from 10 to, let's say, 25% off of that watch. Okay. Unless I'll, 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 I'll have to take your word for that because I still get to have the AD experience. experience so. and, and I say this in terms of when I say 10 to 25, I mean you're going to work for your 10 to 25. Okay. I'm not talking about they're like, oh, here you go. Right, they're not just going to give it to you for walking in the door like you have to. No, no, I'm talking about you. You've built up like I'm talking about you. Might you probably are working, and this is for most brands. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't care what brand, except for hot brands and and whole horology brands right. where they know they could push the stuff no matter what. But right, so, we're, saying, so, we're, so we're 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 taking the Rolex Steel Sport watches, the Hot Tudor brands or the Hot Tudor models and. Yeah, that out of the equation. and 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 I'm saying we're taking like Rolex and most uh, and most models of certain brands like high horology hot brands 
hot models out you're, of the you're, you're, you're talking the watches that have been sitting in the showroom case for at least a month kind yeah. of deal. Okay. Which represents more than 95% of most right. watches. Right. I'm correct. just going to let correct. people know that. Most, <laughs> of the, most of the watch buying public is, is most of the watches that you hear about that sell at such a high price represent a very small, very small percentage of all the watches that are being sold. So the rest of the 95 to 98 percent. I think you're being. I think you're lowballing at 95. I think it's probably closer to 90. Probably like 99 and a yeah. half percent <laughs> of the watches being sold in the world today are not those watches. So straight off the bat, for most of those watches, you walk into AD, um, you you'll get 10 to 25 percent off of that watch. Um, and I've seen certain watches. There's one watch right now I have, I have my eyes on. I absolutely loved it. That watch had an initial price of $2,700 something dollars mm-hmm. right now on eBay with, um, with a manufacturer's, with a warranty. Mm-hmm. That watch is currently on sale for $799. What watch is that? I'll tell you on the side because okay. I don't want okay. to okay. say. You don't want someone to snap it up. Okay, I got you. One, I don't want somebody to snap it up. <laughs> Two, I don't want to say it because um, I don't want the brand to feel some type of way. Fair enough. Um, because, and it's crazy. They, like, that, so, that, so that initial 10 to 25, and now you're, you could get sometimes, especially on a gray market, sometimes you'll see up to 75% off. Well, let, and and let's 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 move the gray market out of the equation because that's not really, not that it's not kosher, but it's not what we're talking about here. So I I'm on Nomon right now. So Nomon mm-hmm. is an AD for several brands, mm-hmm. and so I, what I have in front of me. So like we have the Oris, uh, the the Big Crown Pointer Date line that comes mm-hmm. that comes out there. So I know that the the blue one, for example, because I remember that's a watch that I looked into personally purchasing at some point i think retails for like 1990 or something something around that range Mm -hmm. and nomon who again is an is an authorized oris dealer this is not a gray market they are an authorized dealer of oris Mm -hmm. is selling it on their website for 1530 right now so that so so right there like you said that's basically you know close to 25 percent off off on the the msrp and 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 i i have to in many ways i have to include the gray market simply to show you because so let me show you how crazy this kind of statistic is. Sure, but but you're not but from the gray market, you're not getting the same benefits as buying from an authorized dealer. Like you're not getting manufacturer warranty. Um, Which and is true. Are... And I think in today's age, depending on the price of the watch, a lot of people are not caring about that anymore. Right. Simply because the savings from the gray mar- market are so enticing. Right. If you, have, if you have to pay to get service, you don't care because you've already saved that money up front. Yeah. So here's the crazy math. So you from 80, 10 to 25%, gray market sometimes 75%. And we're not talking Oris. Oris, there's, uh, there's literally a limit that's even on the right. gray market, there's, there's a limit that you'll, you'll get. But for, for, for a lot of brands that people might not know about or mm-hmm. just overall, like we're talking, let's say, even as low as 75%. I know that's a crazy figure, but just, just hear me out. So the crazy thing I realized is, and, and I think this, is, this plays a lot into the fact of why there's really been no work towards fixing mm-hmm. pricing. It's because I think at the end of the day, and I honestly believe this, Brands either one don't care, mm-hmm. are they are or in terms of finance, in terms of money, it really doesn't affect them. And I'll kind of explain to you why. When a brand sells a watch to an AD, they'll give them a, a percent off. Mm-hmm. So a hundred dollar watch, let's say a brand sells that to the AD for fifty dollars. No matter what, rain or shine. Rain or shine, that brand has made $50 on the watch. Correct. 
if that watch, and then a lot of times you'll hear people talk about a five times multiplier when it comes to watches, most, most brands will charge five times the cost of making the watch to, um, in terms of how much they charge for the right. So in this example, five times would be that that watch costs the brand $20 to make. And when I say cost, that includes everything, R&D, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Tune to that watch is twenty dollars. So that brand, no matter what, is selling that watch for fifty dollars. No matter what, they make their money. They make thirty thirty dollars on it. They're cool. They don't care what happens after that, mm-hmm. because one, the AD is going to come back to them regardless of whether of whether they want to or not. Because a lot of times in the relationships between ADs and brands, in order to be an AD, you have to promise a minimum amount. Of, of what course, is sold in sure. your store. Yeah. So, so in terms of to, to continue being an AD or a minimum amount of how much you buy from the brand in order to be an AD. So rain or shine, if you promise the brand, I'm every month I'm taking 20 watches from you. Rain or shine, you're taking 20 watches and you're paying them their 50%. Okay. They pay, you're paying them $50. So for a brand... They don't care what happens after that. They've made their money. They well, couldn't care less. I, I think they care to some extent. I, and this is what I'm saying. I really don't think they do. Mm, because I think, I, if they, I, think, <laughs> I think if they did care, they would do something about the, the epidemic that's happening after this. But I think they so, and they, they so make their money mm. on, the, on the watch that at the end of the day, they're just like, yes, I know some people will say brand reputation. Right. There, I mean, and that's, and I think, I think there is some equity in that because, because if you don't police that to at least the minimum extent, mm-hmm. what do you become? You become Invicta. And I don't think that that's necessarily what you want to be. But in, ter- in terms of in terms of your brand stature, like Invicta's massively successful. So I mean, obviously, like I'm sure you'd like their level of success that they have, but they're not. But but here's successful. the thing, Invicta is successful, not because they're they're um not because they're well in terms of Invicta, that percentage off the MSRP. At the end of the day, they don't care about it because guess what? That amount that th- that it costs them to make mm-hmm. is so low <laughs> that they're still making a killing on it. Of course. So that twenty dollars for Invicta, that twenty percent might be five percent. Right, but the, but so Invicta, Invicta doesn't care about that. But I'm sure that like insert Swiss brand here probably cares about that. But but here's the thing, insert Swiss brand there. All they could do is feign when it happens once or twice. All they could do is feign deniability. Mm. Oh, we didn't know that was happening. Oh, you know, for us, once we've sold it, we don't know what happens after this. Oh no 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 no. Because at the end of the day, no matter what, they're getting their fifty. Mm-hmm. No matter what happens down the line. An AD can be sitting on a hundred pieces. The brand doesn't care. They've already made their cut. It's up to well, the AD now to push push those those items out. Now, what where where it gets scary is, of course, you don't push. You don't want to push the AD that hard because what ends up happening is if the AD can't sell your stuff, you right. lost now a face, and that sucks. So right, there's, there's, and, and, and I, like I said, I think there does come a point where, and again, I don't, I don't know how the contracts are drawn up between brands and between dealers, but I have to imagine that at some point AD is going to come to you and say, hey, we can't sell your watches for any more than, you know, 65% of MSRP. Like we're losing, like we're, we're making such a low margin on this that if you want us to continue buying watches from you, we need a better price from, from you guys. And then it becomes kind of a race downward. And this is how... It's balanced. Occasionally, you have that one watch that the AD is going to want to have. Of course, yes. That's going to sell no matter what. And, 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 and that's, that's kind of how it balances itself. Because 
the 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 AD when they build that relationship, a lot of it falls on them, of course, now to to kind of get to the consumer, mm-hmm. you know, something about the brand. Certain brands sell themselves, like Rolex. Certain brands just sell themselves, but most other brands. If you're working with a good AD, that AD ha- is teaching you more about the brand to get you to know, okay, you know what? This brand is really good. This is their history. They make a good quality watch. And that's how they kind of push. And for, for most ADs, of course, that's, that's, 10, that's, that's 10 to 25% at most. So even the AD at the end of the day, if they're pushing enough, is still making 25 points on the watch, mm-hmm. which, which depending on how much volume they're moving, isn't too bad but mind you that that 10 to 25 percent is not going on every single watch mm. that 10 to 25 percent is going let's say on a good percentage of the inventory but they'll still have watches that they know regardless they're going to sell at co- at the price no matter what mm. the reason it's it, it, it to me it's such an epidemic is There's so many watches. You go anywhere online right now, any, almost any regular watch. And when I say regular, non, as we've defined that, that group of special watches that will sell no matter what, Mm -hmm. any watch that you want, there's going to be somewhere where you can get it, where the savings is going to be enough for you to take a chance on the watch. There's always a percent, there's always a percent of risk in terms of what you get, but that percent of risk. At the end of the day, as a consumer, most consumers are looking for but I I tr- I truly think that if you are I think a higher percentage than we realize of people that buy watches from an A D, I wouldn't go I wouldn't call enthusiasts. Like enthusiasts are aware of the different channels of distribution because we're into watches and and, and we nerd about this stuff. But there's a lot of folks who like buying nice watches who are not watch enthusiasts who mm-hmm. their their understanding is no different than buying a car. There's a million different ways you can buy a car, but the vast majority of people out there that buy cars go to a dealer and mm-hmm. talk to them in person. And yeah. and I feel like watches are kind of the same way in, in a lot of ways. But I think with, with a lot of those, most of the time, those people are buying watches that sell themselves. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it'll be the that'll be the person that'll buy the Rolex. I don't know. I think I think those people also are buying Hamiltons and Breitlings and and things of that nature as well. Honestly, I do. I I, I you know I I'd have to I I would have to agree with you with that. There there are certain brands that I think people will just like the brand recognition is enough where people will just walk into a place and then they'll just buy it. Right. But I I. Too many times, uh, believe, I was, believe it or not, some people probably don't even give a crap about the brand on the watch. Like, like a good salesman can educate you about the brand and make you understand that it's a quality product. You might not necessarily care what the brand is, but it, it I, I don't know how much a percentage of buyers that is. I think it's higher than you think. I really do. I really do. I, it's weird. You, you know, as watch guys, we kind of get lost in the bubble of... We do, because we're, we're, kind of, we're kind of in... We're kind of in, we're in this, like, very insular circle with other watch people who all have, you know, the same awarenesses and, and things of that nature. Yeah. But, I, but again, we make up a smaller part, especially if you're talking mass market. Like, micro brands is a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. But on mass market, I think we, you'd be shocked to find out how much... And again, I'm, I'm speculating as well because i don't have access to this information but how much the how small of a a portion of the pie the quote-unquote enthusiast community is when it comes to watches that are being sold in storefronts Hmm. what i what i'd also like to know is like i have an idea an idea in my head of what an ad Mm -hmm. of what i would consider an ad um but then you also have to remind yourself someone like jared's Mm-hmm. or someone like like Smythe uh, or, so, or something like that yeah those are, are ad's as well correct but, but you gotta remember even those guys have their percentages that they're always selling i guess what i'm trying to get to is i think across the board 
us as watch guys realize that the price on a watch is almost never the price on a watch. Correct. I think that is slowly starting to leak into the greater population in terms of there's so much information out there Mm -hmm. that perfect example. Someone walks into an an AD, they know nothing about watches. Mm -hmm. Guy comes in, says, oh man, this Hamilton is amazing. This is exactly the watch you're, you're buying. We're in a time now where it's almost given that that person is going to take their phone out, mm-hmm. do a quick search, and the first thing they're going to see is the fact that that same watch that they're about to spend $750 on can be purchased somewhere for $400. Mm-hmm. So even if they're not savants or they're not watch people, just the day and age we live in where that information is so accessible leans towards a more informed consumer who's just like, hmm, do I really want to spend that much? Yes, you have people who will just walk in and buy, just hmm, give me that. But I think, and, and I think this is a, 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 a lot has to do with like the bubble and how the Swiss market um, like Swiss watches Mm -hmm. Uh, a little while back, they kind of had that bubble that burst. I think your customer is changing into a younger customer now. And you're also trying to attract a younger customer. But at the same time, if you're going to bring in a younger customer, by default, that customer is going to be more informed Mm -hmm. because that customer has more access to information than your other customers. I was... At, I was at, um, I almost don't even want to say it. <laughs> I saw, a, 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 it's weird. I'm trying to think of a way to say it without saying it. But I witnessed a Swiss brand moving watches. Mm-hmm. And I saw the difference in, in the demographic and how, how they were approaching it. I saw the older demographic literally go, I like that, bag it up. Mm-hmm. And let's go. I saw, I saw, and let's go. And I saw the younger demographic like, oh, I like that. Um, let me check that out. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And that way, I think that's that's kind of where we're leaning into. I I, it, I, I think I think over time you're probably right. I, I I think as 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 the demographics do shift and as you know the older watch buying crowd ceases to exist and as the younger, you know the more tech savvy folks that are coming up in today's age, um become you know the, those watch buyers over time. Yeah, I think that you're going to see a bit of a shift in the marketplace, but I think it's going to be a little bit more. Gradual, because my my also thought is that, that for the most part, there are two types of people that walk into an AD. There's enthusiasts that want to see stuff in person that they've seen online that they want to try on and that kind of stuff. And then there's people that just want to buy a watch that have the disposable money to be able to walk into an AD, buy a watch at cost or at 10% off if they want to work with the guy and then and then roll out. They're not worried about price comparing or shopping it online or this, that, or the other, because that, that for most people that might not understand, um, you know, the, the fact that you do have these other marketplaces, it's, they, they don't look at a watch like a car where, you know, you know, they, th- those folks understand the car buying business. You understand that, you know, how, how car buying works and that there's a lot of wiggle room there, but you, you might look at a watch as no different than any other good that just has an MSRP on it. Mm. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I, I'm, I'm with you, I think, over time in the long run, that that's something that has to be looked at. And it's probably bleeding in more, like more and more year over year. It's funny. I, where you might say it's, it's a gradual, I think it's, it's happening at a more, at a faster pace. Mm-hmm. Where, where you might say, Ricardo, I don't think we're going to get there until probably another 10 years. I'd be like, mm, 
I'd be surprised if we last till four. And it, it's, it's, it's weird because as I explained, the scary thing about that model is as at the end of the day, as long as the, there's no incentive for the brands to really worry about it mm. until it gets to a point. There, there's nothing that really incentivizes the brand to start working on that. Because in the yeah, brand, but, but, there, but there's also something else you can do as a brand to combat that. You can raise prices. Like that, like, 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 okay, if we're going to only sell, you know, if, if the AD is going to only be able to sell the watch for 40% of cost, well, let's, or, you know, 60% of, you know, what it, you know, what the MSRP is, well, let's make the MSRP higher then so that everyone's getting a bigger cut of the buy. Like I said, it's 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 an interesting thing to shift. It's it's and it's it's like any industry, honestly. Like every industry but is going the, through this kind of the, people. So that's the tricky thing about raising prices. It's 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 not as easy as it, it sounds. Like it's you oh you raise, you have you have to back it up with like li, with like something. legitimate reasoning. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You can't just be like, oh guys, yeah, it was seven hundred yesterday. Now it's nine hundred. I mean, Seiko did it. And everyone's loving that black outfit right now. Dude, they, <laughs> they, here's the thing. They did it, but even then, most of, what is that black outfit is selling for? What's the street, what's the street value of that? Yeah, but, I'm, but, but it's still more than the Sarb 17 was. Whether you talk gray market or not, like it's still selling for more money than the Sarvo. Sarvo how, many, how many of those are out there now to still purchase? Yeah, now that's it. Yeah. So, so but but for them, and even them, it's different because they they kind of built a cult following. They did. If you think about it, Seiko 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 didn't just like Seiko, someone at Seiko literally sat down and said, "Oh shoot, people really love our stuff." It must. It must be. It must be that extra twenty hours power reserve. Everyone's going. Nuts for it. <laughs> so, so that's what I'm saying. I think oh, extra twenty and it's um, no, they actually all always beat it at uh, twenty eight thousand eight hundred. Yeah. So, so for them, like if you have, if the people are coming, regardless, you could definitely <laughs> spice it up a bit. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't for them. For them as a brand. It, it it for as much as people complain about how much they've raised their prices for them as a brand, it's kind of like you had a, you, you had a strong following already. So to raise prices, no matter someone there did the calculation and said, even if we lose 20% of, of, of our customer, it's still, then you also have to remember Seiko pushes a ton. Ton of watches, man. Right, I feel, I, and like I said, I feel, I feel like we're getting, I feel like we're getting into the weeds a little bit now. But, uh. So there's, there's so many. You know what it is? There's so many points of, 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 of data, and so many different things that are put into the formula when it comes to pricing a watch, because for like Seiko, which pushes so many watches, the, the, the each individual watch what they need to come back from it is not as bad as someone who's not pushing as much. So, so there's definitely a, economies of scale for Seiko. So that's kind of their, their Seiko is just, we could have a whole episode on Seiko. That's just Seiko. Well, see, but, see what you got to do then is you have to chat with your, uh, with, with your, with your friends that you've made down at the AD and kind of bounce some of these questions off of them. Cause they would have a lot more insight than we would. about this. Yeah. I, I definitely would be off the record. Like, of course, I'd, yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to, like, you know, any AD out there, I'd, I'd love to have just a one-on-one -on -one personal conversation and just see, like, how are you guys kind of combating this? Because mm -hmm. it, it's got to be difficult. Like, yes, you can eventually, you know, maybe push some of your stuff to the gray market. Like, I know some ADs do, regardless mm -hmm. of what they say. But at the same time, like, it, it, it's it's you you you're you're missing out somewhere like there, there's got to be some way to combat it but it's, it's tough it's tough but it, it just it's so fascinating when you think it was just it was such a fascinating thing for me when i just started to sit there and think about mm -hmm. watch pricing and 
and what kind of goes into that and why right now it just seems like it's all over the place. Right. Like no watches price is actually that price. It's, it's, it's so weird. Like, yes, you see it in, in, in other areas, but I, but not as drastic as this. Mm. Like in watches, watches is in all the things I buy. Watches is one of the watches. I could literally, you could literally walk down a block, buy one watch for four hundred dollars, walk down a block, and maybe find that same watch for two. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's scary. Um, so that's just what 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 made me so interested in the topic. And you know, I'd love to hear more people's points in you know in, in what they think about it because it's just something that really that really just just it, it, there's there's so much to it it's really fascinating i i can't i it's like i started to think about this like a few days ago and i just fell down a rabbit hole and i was just like but it's just one of those crazy things um but yeah before <laughs> before we we actually end um today's episode i know there's one more thing you wanted to to talk about and I know you wanted to the the Benris. I know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So ta- talking about watch pricing, um, even if you like the design, and we don't have to spend a lot of time on this. Mm. Now, look, I'm 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 one that's always advocated, especially for micro brands and Benris. I don't. Are they considered a micro brand? Probably not at this point. I I I, I, I would be. They would be at the upper realm simply okay of where so, they are in the process of trying to get the brand back i i have always been a guy that has advocated that a watch is always more than the sum of its parts so that you can't evaluate these things objectively sometimes mm-hmm. but at this by the same token you're gonna have to explain to me how a stainless steel watch with what i have to guess is a miyota 9015 movement inside of it Actually, that, not a ninety fifty. Oh, it's oh, it's an it's an eight twenty one. Um, it's yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an eight series with hacking. Even even better. So <laughs> so, so, so 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 it's got a view of an eight series movement in it. Mm-hmm. It has a mineral crystal. I know. I and know. this watch is right under eleven hundred dollars. <sighs> You know how we, we, we always talk about, <laughs> we were just talking about we're in our watch bubble? Yes. Um, the watch bubble, that's, those are the first things that you think about if you're in the watch bubble. If you're in the watch bubble, those are the first things. Let me, let me, let me ask it to you. Let me ask it to you a different way. And, and this is going to sound reductive, mm-hmm. but I'm not apologizing for it because I think it's fair. Mm-hmm. Why would I ever buy this over a Hamilton khaki field, which costs $200 less, by the way? Mm -hmm. i'll go down the line and i I hope people don't take this as dak ricardo's just pushing this thing but i i'll I'll give you some honest reasons um one if someone buy is buying this they might want to get in on the floor on the Mm -hmm. ground floor of the revival of very important um historical um american watch company Okay. Um, the, the brand was dormant for a little while. Um, just was a purchase and, and uh, reinvested in. It, it's kind of being brought back. Um, so one, you have people who just want to get on the ground for for that. Um, two, you have people who just want something different. There are a ton of Hamiltons out there. Um, ton of Hamiltons out there. You, <laughs> you're 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 saying they want something different. They may want something different. But they are but but with the with this watch that Benders is putting out, they are definitely I'm not gonna say aping because this was just the the field design, the field watch design back in the day when Benders was making watches. Mm-hmm. But this is not it's not it's not exactly an uncommon layout. I'll yeah. Say. It's it's definitely not. Um it's it's but it's kind of there design in terms of you know the three stars mm. um it's it it's it the basic especially for military watches because mil spec was very specific 
in terms of watches and layout and then stuff like that. So you will have a lot of similarities amongst uh, mil spec watches. Mm -hmm. Uh, But at the same time, it's kind of their marking on, on mil spec and, you know, the whole Ben Riss three star. Um, I can't lie. Ever since I posted those photos and a couple other outlets have talked about it in the comment section, those tend to be the two biggest things people hark on. It's unavoidable. And, it's unavoidable. And, and, and again, I'm someone that'll, that'll bang on people for focusing in on that, but I think in this case it's warranted. I will say this, and, I th- and this is the point I, w- I wanted to make earlier. I don't know, and someone maybe could speak better to this, for a brand that's just starting out, mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what they have access to. We, we, I mean, we talk like, oh, yeah, it's a new branch. They should be able to get edits like that. Come on, man. Why didn't they just put an edit in there? They don't, they don't, but, but that's the thing. I'm not saying that they need to get different parts. I'm just saying that they need to be a little bit more cognizant on price because I'm sorry. Like, when compare shopping, yeah. I, not, not even compare shopping. It's just that enthusiasts are going to be your market. And enthusiasts, most enthusiasts are probably going to be savvy enough to look at that and be like, why the hell would I ever pay this much money for this? You know what I mean? I, I, uh, I mean, those are very valid points. Um, all I can say is they're, they're, there's got to be a demographic out there for that. Cause, and, and look, and, and, and cause you, being, being transparent and fair, I've not had the watch in my hand. Mm-hmm. I've used an, I've, I've held enough watches though that I'm pretty sure I can, can suss out what the experience would be. I don't think getting this watch in hand is going to all of a sudden make me see the light in some kind of crazy way. I'm, I'm going to, I'll say this. Um, in terms of like, like cases, this might be one of the best cases I've seen on a field watch. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in terms of beginning ingredients Mm -hmm. to if you're going to, you know, start putting ingredients together for making a brand, I think they have a very good start here in terms of dial case. Um, I think these are very good start, but I definitely understand. Like I'd be lying to myself as Mm -hmm. a watch guy. If I sat here and I said, Oh yeah, guys. Yeah. 1095. Yeah. Cause I know what guys are thinking about. Like, like, think- like I said, this, it, it just reeks of a watch that two months from now, magically, oh, look at that. We're doing $300 off, guys. We're having a sale. Like, come buy the watches at $300. You know what I mean? Like, like it just, it, 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 it seems like it's just right there. Like, it, it's, it's low hanging fruit. To, it it, it, it is. That. But I mean, they, they have some great, I think they have some great things. Not I think they have some great things coming down the pipe. Mm. Um, that I think a lot of people will be interested to. Um, but I, I think this is just their initial offering. Well, like, I mean, like I said, I, I'm, I'm willing to let them uh, make a fool out of me. But, uh, but just, I, just... I, I, I got to get one of these. I got to get one of these to you. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to make you a full convert, but I think, I think you might even say in terms of aesthetic and case design, you might actually say it's better than your Hammy. Um, that wouldn't I, be hard, by the way. Not that Hamilton is crap by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not like the be-all, end-all of field watches in that price range. Price range. So I, I yeah. think, like I said, I think they have a very good – these introductory ingredients, I think they have a very good mix right now. Um, but it's definitely going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. At ten ninety five, there, I, I sat down and I thought about all the other options, hmm. and I, I could completely understand where guys are coming from. Um, it's crazy. Like I, I told you, I spent the day just going around um, because it, it almost seemed like I got my hands on the watch a little, a little bit earlier than other outlets started to put their information out there, hmm. and. Literally, as every outlet was putting in their information, the comments were, oh, man, I looked at the watch. It looked amazing. And then I went to the website. Mm. But at, least, then, at, least, at least they're getting people in the door. 
but then I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I also, rem- I also remember the type of people that comment don't always reflect the type of people who are going to be, who are going to eventually buy the watch. Correct. Um, I don't know what their goals are. I really don't know what they're I mean, I mean, for most of us, our, I understand the goal is to sell probably every watch that they have. Mm-hmm. But in the long run, I don't know what their goals are with, with this initial offering. I know where they want to be and where they're trying to be by the end of the year and then some of the other and new models they want to put out that really harken back to kind of the, the things that they were known for. So that's one thing, but it's, it's always a tricky thing. It's always a tricky thing trying to, and it's funny, we are just talking about the pricing, trying to find that price that, that kind of works. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's tricky, but I completely understand. I, I, I'm sitting here and like I said, I, I, my goal is not to defend the brand. I'm just, I just want to at least show people something new, but on the same side of things, I completely understand where people are coming from. Right. I, I, I completely, because that's the, that's the discerning eye that both you and I would have. Mm. Like we would, but, but I, but I, I think that that same discerning eye is going to be shared by a lot of the base that they're going to be marketing to at the end of the day. Mm. So, and, and <laughs> at the, at the same token, I, I've been trying to find out what their runs on these are going to be. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I'm not quite sure if these are going to be, Oh, these are mass producer if they're going to be limited. And because there's, there's some I, identifying markers on the case mm-hmm. that make me think these are going to be limited. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what their goal is. If, if these are limited and I can do some quick math in terms of how many watches they produced for this initial offering, then it's, it's a reasonable amount where, you know what, I, I don't think they'll, 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 it's a reasonable amount. Like, it's not like they, they put like a ton out there and it's, it's going to backfire on them. If, if what I'm thinking is a, a limited number on the case mm-hmm. is what it is, then there's only a small amount of watches that they're making in this initial run. So the stakes are not as crazy high as if they were making four five or six times this amount right because i think in total they have 10 they have 10 total models out right now and just looking at the cases is yeah 10 times what this number is saying on the case it's reasonable okay um, but it's it's, it's you know it's a great case in point though like like mm-hmm. you know what we should come back to this like down the line well i mean and that's a, like i said micro brand pricing is a whole different discussion yeah all together um probably a good place to leave it yeah we've been, we've been going a while so yeah. but, but i definitely says you know what let's let's we'll, we'll mark this on the calendar same way we were marking your you down to 10 and me down to five mm-hmm. we'll mark this on the calendar we'll look back at this in like in three months and we'll kind of see i'll we'll look back at it three weeks and i bet you there might be a little <laughs> bit different different thing going on here we'll we'll have to check and see Oh man! But uh, you're killing me, Peter. <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, I mean, good news is you guys aren't gonna have to wait three weeks to hear us again. We'll be back with you. Oh uh, yeah, probably, probably, probably week. next week. Um, oh, I yeah. think I think we're we're we've kind of evened out into our beginning of the year craziness. Yeah. Um, so we should be returning to regularly scheduled programming. Yeah, and and probably won't be as long next time. Like I said, we had a couple weeks of pent up uh, podcasting that we had to do. So definitely, but uh, but yeah, like I said, don't uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, click subscribe, ring the bell here on Watch with us. Uh, head on over to the Budding Watch Enthusiast, which you can uh, find a link to in the description down below. Click subscribe while you're there. If you're listening to us on podcasts app of some kind, click subscribe to Watch with this channel. Uh, you'll get this podcast plus all of the other uh, Watch with us videos that get posted, like Doc's house calls uh, in audio mm-hmm. format as well. If you prefer to listen to it that way, uh, go to Instagram. Follow me at Budding Watch Enthusiast. Follow Ricardo at Ready Said Watch. Follow the Beard Time account and follow Watch with us. I think we got them all. Yeah, and guys, I mean, we talked about a ton of topics today. Um, love to see you guys talk about them in the comments. Um, it, it's, it's a lot to digest, mm-hmm. um, but it's also a lot of things that I know people are probably very passionate about. 
yep. um, and really have a viewpoint on. So please, guys, you know. And and to that end, too, if you guys do have uh, topics that you'd like to see us cover on the show, um, again, let, let us know in the comments, and we'll definitely uh, consider that for a future episode. For yeah. sure. And um, my goal is I'm trying to – to, I'll talk to Brad. Um, we're trying. I'm going to try to see if we could get that special guest that I was talking about a few weeks back on the next episode. Um, I'll keep you guys in the loop. Um, of course, it all depends on how our, all three of our schedules work. Mm-hmm. But I always, think um, always the tricky part. So yeah, because I, I think oh yeah, all three of us have kids, and all three <laughs> of us have young kids. <laughs> so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Um, but my goal is to definitely see if I could get him in um, for this next episode because I think he has a lot of case in points, uh, a lot of points uh, that I think would be, be cool to digest. Um, funny thing is, uh, me and him were laughing about the the, the Houdinki video that I sent you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a funny video. Like since Scott Swatch has put out a pretty good uh, video that kind of harkens oh. back to a topic that Ricardo and I were discussing. Oh man, a couple, that, a couple episodes ago. So that's some great observation, though, because it was blurred out yeah. in the video. But Absolutely. Clearly, once you know what it is, it's clearly what it is. There's you no. Got, you, got, you, you got you got brand deals. You gotta you got yeah. You gotta get there. And and again, I, I I make no bones about that. We are open for business as well. So if, you, if yes, anyone yes, wants yes. to come in and sponsor us, well, preferably <laughs> preferably for our own, you know. Oh, the the people that continue to trust us non rash related stuff you know maybe some headphones <laughs> you know, if you guys are trying to uh, some shades non watch related stuff stuff <laughs> that I won't mind hey these beautiful shades are from Glasses USA check out Glasses USA I, say, I have no problem doing that um, watch related stuff I'd feel a little yeah yeah, yeah really I'm, I'm I'm fine with all of it I'll 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 disclose what I need to disclose <laughs> to these people before I uh, before we do that but uh. But thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, We will see you all the next time. Thanks, guys.